After this, she stood upon both feet and cried in a loud voice, Sizzy, zuzzy, zick! The charm began to work. The sky began to darken, and a low rumbling sound was heard in the air. There came the sound of flapping wings, a great chattering and laughing, and the sun came out of the dark sky to show the wicked witch was now surrounded by a crowd of monkeys, each with a pair of immense and powerful wings on his shoulders. One, much bigger than the others, seemed to be their leader. He flew close to the witch and said, You have called us for the third and last time. What is your command? Go to the strangers who trespass upon my land and destroy them all except for the lion, said the wicked witch. Bring that beast to me, for I have a mind to saddle him like a horse and make him work. Your commands shall be obeyed, said the leader. Then, with a great deal of chattering and noise, the winged monkeys flew away to the place where Dorothy and her friends were walking. Some of the monkeys grabbed the tin man and carried him through the air until they were over a country thickly covered with sharp rocks. Here they dropped the poor tin man, who fell a great distance to the rocks, where he lay so battered and dented that he could neither move nor groan. Others of the monkeys caught the scarecrow, and with their long fingers pulled all of the straw out of his clothes and head. They made his hat and boots and clothes into a small bundle and threw it into the top branches of a tall tree. The remaining monkeys threw pieces of thick rope around the lion and wrapped them around his body and head and legs until he was unable to bite or scratch or struggle in any way. Then they lifted him up and flew away with him to the witch's castle, where he was placed in a small yard with a high iron fence around it, so that he could not escape. But Dorothy they did not harm at all. She stood with Toto in her arms, watching the sad fate of her comrades and thinking it would soon be her turn. The leader of the winged monkeys flew up to her, his long, hairy arms stretched out and his ugly face grinning terribly. But he saw the mark of the good witch's kiss upon her forehead and stopped short, motioning the others not to touch her. We dare not harm this little girl, he said to them for she is protected by the power of good, and that is greater than the power of evil. All we can do is to carry her to the castle of the Wicked Witch and leave her there. So carefully and gently they lifted Dorothy in their arms and carried her swiftly through the air until they came to the castle where they set her down upon the front doorstep. Then the leader said to the witch, We have obeyed you as far as we were able. The tin man and the scarecrow are destroyed, and the lion lies bound in your yard. The little girl we dare not harm, nor the dog she carries in her arms. Your power over our kind is now at an end, and you will never see us again. 